Well, at Rixton, we've worked with a number of customers to implement continuous integration and elements of continuous delivery to supplement MuleSoft's AnyPoint platform tooling that we'd like to share with you. In short, I'll be providing a demo uh, where we effectively take a MuleSoft API that's been designed and developed through AnyPoint Designer and Studio and pushed through a continuous delivery process. I will show how changes made in source control are monitored and application changes are dynamically picked up by a uh, CI uh, server, which in this case is Jenkins, then compiled, tested, packaged, and deployed onto a standalone Mule runtime, which is running on my local machine, acting as a development sandbox. I'll then show how we can prepare a release and perform the release, which are also integrated uh, for automated deployment steps and the promotion of the application to uh, a Cloud Hub hosted staging environment and production environment. As I mentioned, we're using Jenkins to act as our CI server and using its declarative pipeline capability to orchestrate the phases of the Maven build lifecycle, deployment and uh, packaged artifacts to a Nexus repository, and then deployment of the actual application by downloading those artifacts from Nexus and leveraging MuleSoft's AnyPoint Runtime Manager. So let's get started. So uh, in here, this is the AnyPoint Studio, which hopefully most of the audience is familiar with. And you can see that we have, a, 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 a have an API project that's already um, created. And what this API project does is it allows us to send a JSON-based request to an endpoint, um, convert that into an email, and then send that email out as a, as a notification. Uh, and so in this service, I've got some changes that I've, I've made. So this is sitting on my development branch in Git. We're using effectively the Git flow uh, branching model. Um, and so I've got these, these changes staged. So I, I want to include a prefix into, into the email that's being sent. Um, and uh, in this project, I also have uh, the pipelines, uh, so the Jenkins declarative pipeline definition, which control, once this uh, project is committed, how it should be built and how it should be deployed. Um, and I haven't really got time to go into too much detail here, um, but we'll, we'll see this from the Jenkins perspective once I actually commit these code changes. But effectively, we have a bunch of stages and these stages control what happens in terms of building, packaging, testing, integration tests, and then deploying the code into various environments. Um, so as I said, I've got these, these code changes staged, so I just need to bring up uh, my command line. So if I do a git uh, let's have a look at the branches. Oh, hang on, I'm on the wrong tab. That would make sense. So if we have a look, I can see that I've got my uh, file that's modified here. If I just do a quick diff on that, we can see the changes that were made. So we can see that uh, before we were merely substituting um, a flow variable. I've now included a prefix, uh, info prefix, and the flow variable. So I just need to add this change. So I can see that that's added. So now I need to commit the change to my development branch. With a nice comment. Okay, that's added. And now if I push this, this will then actually, the result of pushing this change to my Git branch here, this will now get monitored by Jenkins, which is um, looking at, at, at my project repo. Okay, so that's gone across just fine. Uh, and now if we move to, to Jenkins, uh, it should pick this up. So we can see that a build has been scheduled on the development branch and it's picking that up as we speak. 
So if I go into it, you can now see a graphical view of that Jenkins pipeline job uh, that, that I was showing you earlier. And we can see that it started the build phase and it's now entering um, the package phase. So what this has done is it sucked down the code from our Bitbucket repository um, and now executing various goals of the Maven lifecycle. So we're packaging the application, we're executing unit tests, we're executing um, an integration test phase, and then we're deploying the results of that uh, application to a Nexus repository. Once that's deployed to a Nexus repository, you can see that there's the deploy to environment step. And what that does then is based on the branch on which the changes were made, uh, it decides which environment we want to deploy the application into. And then there's any other kind of declarative actions uh, following that afterwards. Unfortunately, the pipeline does tend to, to take a while here. So, um, but what this is doing is uh, at the end of this, this will be deploying the application into our test environment. Uh, sorry, development environment, which is sitting on a sandbox. So if I switch to the sandbox uh, or in the API administrator, I want to go into runtime manager. Mm -hmm. So we can see we have an application that's currently started at the moment, um, but we're actually going to deploy it over that with the latest version of this code. Oh, that's production. Let's go into sandbox. So this is running here on, on my machine. Let's go back and have a look. Okay, so it's running the integration test. Uh, so we, that means we can actually have a look at the unit test. So if I go and look at the log file here and have a look, I can see that we've run Maven clean test. And I can see that we run two unit tests, zero failures. So this uh, error handling test suite and the email test suite I can see that we've run uh, five tests, and uh, again, we got zero errors. For the integration test, it's actually spinning up a Docker container, which is hosting uh, an SMTP server. And in that SMTP server, we're then interacting with that from an integration test perspective and physically sending an email and checking that the email arrives in an email inbox. Okay. So we're just waiting for that to deploy to, to Nexus, and then we can move on to the, the next action. So now that that's deployed on develop, uh, and it's been deployed to the environment, if I go into any kind of manager here, um, no, I, think I, can't, I can't see it from there. If I go to my terminal, just to prove that the application's been deployed, you can see that the application's been deployed here, uh, 11.17. So that's in dev, and it's just starting up and being redeployed as we speak. Okay, so, uh, I did all my applications have, have been deployed, it's passed its testing, so I actually wanna prepare for a release now and deploy it to stage, so I can do that. by using the JGIF flow plugin. So if I start a release, what this will actually do for me is uh, once I verify my credentials probably, yeah. Okay, it wants me to, to tell the uh, Tell it the version that I have, the version of the new artifact and what the version will be after it's been released, and it will go ahead and create a branch for me. Okay, so I'm now on that release branch, and what that will do from a job perspective is you can see that we're actually building our release branch now. Release 208. So if we go through it's running uh, the same stages and the same pipeline that we had before, and it'll make sure all those validate before it then goes and deploys the application onto the staging environment. Um, we'll have to 
wait for, for this to finish before I can then conclude with the, the next step. So, uh, this time we're actually going into test stage. Now, the difference with test stage is that this is actually a Cloud Hub environment. So, one of the benefits of this approach is that the pipeline is taking care of um, the interactions with Runtime Manager and doing that regardless of whether this is a Mule application running on premise or Mule, or Mule application running in the cloud. So, it, it supports the hybrid approach, which is really nice. Um, so this is this will probably still be running because it's running the integration test, so we're going to have to uh, wait for for that to to conclude. Um, but effectively, it's going to deploy our application again. Yeah, that's quite old. That, that deployment. So uh, let's just wait for this to finish. Perhaps now I'm wondering if uh, we uh, are too rigorous on our integration test. <laughs> okay, so that's deploying it to Nexus, and then it'll be due to them deploy that into our staging environment. So. While that happens, let's just prepare the comments. So now that we've uh, deployed our release and finished, so the, the staging pipeline has now been kicked off. Um, so it's now sucking the artifact down from Nexus repository and just deploying it. So it's now updating Cloud Hub uh, and deploying that application. So let's have a look. Uh, yeah, so you can see today there's a deployment 1151. So the deployment has just started um, and this is in our test stage environment. Okay, so that's gonna go through and, and, and deploy the application. And this will keep monitoring that. And once it's realized it's successful, uh, clean up or alert us if, if the build fails. So all that remains now is we've deployed a, a version, so we could uh, run additional acceptance tests, but effectively we're saying that we're happy with the status of that release. And so in, uh, I can actually finish the release now, and what this will do is it will run exactly the same steps and deploy this into production. Um, just because we're tight for time, I'll let this run, uh, but return to the slides. going so yeah it does take a while um, and it's in the process of updating the application so if I go to any point manager and let's go into our prod look at the log files okay so it looks like it's in process of deployment and it says that application started so the proofs in the pudding so if I send a request into the endpoint on which our production application is listening at the moment, uh, hopefully we'll get um, a response. Okay, that's taking a while, but I got a response with 201. Uh, I can see that in the log file coming through in the background. So if I go into our email, uh, it should come through here. Okay, info. So we can see that uh, the message has changed since the one I had before. And so that proves conclusively that we've managed to roll through in the space of 15, 20 minutes from develop to test into production while performing a release using uh, the GitFlow branching strategy. 